It's time for 28mm World War II action. Will you recreate history or reshape it your way? On the Bolt Action Hub at beastsofwar.com. Venture into the dangerous dungeons of myth as a mighty hero and stand against the darkness. Visit the Myth Hub on beastsofwar.com and begin your story. Hi everybody, welcome to What's in the Box. Today, as you can see, we have the, the new two-player starter set for War Machine. Mm -hmm. I'm really happy with this because they actually switched up the factions. If yeah. you remember, the last one was actually Menoth versus Kedor. Mm -hmm. We now have Signor versus Krix. Yeah. So I'm, I'm a happy bunny. And these are two factions from sort of the opposite ends of the spectrum. Like, I'd always look at Signor being the... The how, good guys. How would, how would yeah, you describe it? Describe it in D&D &D terms. It's like the, the noble good or the... Uh, lawful good. The lawful good against the chaotic evil. Okay, if you want to go down I, that I'm route. I'm going to say that. All right. I think that's the way I I'm going to do I do love the artwork that's on the front of this yeah. box. Just the two jacks facing off each against each other. Mm -hmm. All right, so first thing we get in the bag, you're going to get one of these, which I think is really handy. It's the little paper measuring tape, yep. which is, if you don't have one and you're just getting in, this is going to make life just that little bit easier for you. Mm -hmm. We then have our books. So you're going to get your Prime Digest, which is a, a nice little A5 copy of the main rulebook. It's got all the rules you're going to need to play in there, lovely artwork, some painting guides, and at the very back you'll get uh, the Horde rules as well. So if your mate is actually jumping into Hordes and you and your mate are jumping into War Machine, you've got it covered. Yeah. You then have these, which are the little storybooks that come with each new faction. Mm -hmm. So the world has moved on a few years now, and uh, these are basically what are bringing you up to date with the, the Warcasters that are in your starter box. So if you've looked at our unboxings before, you'll have seen we've done Signar before. Yeah. So we, we may slightly skim over them in this uh, this little review, but uh, we'll try and catch everybody. And the Signar sure. do get some extra stuff in this. Uh, you do get another book. Oh yes, you get your, your basic training manual. This is one of the greatest things privateers came up with because it breaks down the game into a set of missions, which means you learn stage by stage by stage. Yeah. And do you get two of these, I think? Uh, what's um, that? No, that is a scenario. Oh, okay. So in this, you're getting Relic Rumble. Mm -hmm. So there's an Orgoth artifact to go after. Now that's a nice little touch. And when you're done, you've got a nice little bit of a, a pin-up art of a Signarin and a Kedor Jack going at each other. <laughs> you also get the, the battle mat. The battle mat. I'm going to unfold it. Yeah, you're going to try to unfold it. I'm going to try to unfold it. I like this idea because, again, if you are just starting out and you've never played a war game before, this gives you something that you can actually just lay down on the kitchen table and start playing with. Yep. So I think it's, it's a fantastic idea just to get you up and going. Mm-hmm. Uh, other than that, you get all of your cards. And in this one, you get quite a few cards because as well as getting the standard Warcaster and a couple of Jacks, mm -hmm. each faction is getting a unit in this as well. Yep. Uh, you also get one of these little cards, which is actually a really cool little thing because it's it's something that's important in the game, but you wouldn't really pick up on very quickly. Okay. They give you this, which is actually a fold-up wall. <laughs> so because walls and cover and actually being concealed in this game are so important, yep. having something as simple as that in the box to actually say, okay, we're going to actually teach you about getting into cover mm -hmm. early in this. I like the idea of. Yeah. So, uh, John, if you want to start opening bags here, <coughs> okay. I'm going to have a quick look and see what we're getting. So, Signar are getting some Stormguard Infantry, Beth Maddox, Lancer, Firefly, and... Oh, someone has mixed the cards up on me here. And an Ironclad. So, standard set, aside from getting that Stormguard Infantry, which yep. is very important, because the Stormguards work really well with this set, mm -hmm. because of the Firefly, because it is uh, an ability that actually buffs up your stuff. Uh, now, in this, you're actually getting Wraith Witch Agatha. Mm -hmm. That, I'm not sure, is that different to the actual the actual regular star set? Because I thought it was another character you got in it. I think it looks like her. Um, I don't know. I think it was a different character you were getting in the actual base Crick starter set. So they may have actually changed out the Warcaster on this as well. Mm -hmm. So that'll be interesting. So who do we have first That's here? one of our first Helljacks, or okay. Bonejacks. Well, yes, Bonejack, because the Helljacks are the big ones, the Bonejacks are the little ones. Yep. So if I quickly lay this out, I'm going to guess that it's our little Death Ripper, which is a very useful little Warjack, uh, because it's got an arc node on it. Mm -hmm. Now, what Arc Nodes do in the game, for anyone that doesn't know, they essentially let your Warcaster cast spells from that model as if 
the casting point was from them. Yeah, so it's a, it's a relay. Control. Yeah, it's a relay. Basically increasing your control range up to, well, Agatha has seven, so the control range is 14 for Jax, mm -hmm. which means that's as far away as they can go and still get focus. Yep. And it means that you can have this little Jack up to 14 inches away and still cast your spells through it. Mm -hmm. So uh, the mini itself is coming in the really nice uh, green, well, it's a really dark green Crix plastic. Yeah. Which they're using. Uh, now, I will say this stuff, I would advise to use super glue with it just to make life easier. Plastic um, glue will not work. No, plastic glue will not work. But it's a really straightforward little design. Just, uh, you know, clean it up a little bit here and there where it needs it and work on from there. You've mm -hmm. got the, the upper and lower jaws for the actual Death Ripper itself here to actually give it that, that skulled vestige. Which is one of the things I like about Crix because they're not what you would call a standard faction. They're a necrotic faction which is, you know, digging up grave grave sites from battlegrounds and stuff to actually fuel their armies. Yeah. So we've got uh, two big these jacks are the two in hell jacks. here. Yeah. yeah, these are the two hell jacks. I'm going to try and split them apart here because the two that we actually get in here are the Slayer mm -hmm. and the Reaper. Okay. So yeah. I'm going to guess this is probably for the Reaper. This is just two spiky bits, legs, shoulders. Well, we'll go through the main bits and then I'll show off the weaponry because that's the only real change that you're going to see in here, okay? Right. So you've got your main body for your Helljack. Uh, you're going to have to cut this vent off at the top here. So be a, if you're a youngster, be a little bit careful of that so as not to get your fingers. But there's lots of really cool detail in here. But I would say with this coloring on here, you don't really need to actually get some primer down on this straight away. Uh, we then have these, which are two of the claws, which I believe are for the Slayer, which is the basic standard uh, heavy jack for Crix. So it's handy jack, runs up, it's got three attacks in melee, no shooting to think about, so it's just get it forward and get it into combat nice and early. Mm -hmm. uh, we have another one of the bodies here. Ah, now, these are the shoulders, or one of the shoulders for the actual held jack. They're designed so they've got a little ball joint on this side, and your actual arms are connecting to a larger ball joint. So you yep. can get some good posability out of these. I should have, yes, I have four of these. And they are all the same, I believe. I don't think there's any changes to the sculpts there. We've got these little spiky bits, which I believe are the actual fingers that go on to the Slayer. We then have this, which is, I think, the Slayer's head, because it's got those tusks on it. And the tusks are actually an attack, so it essentially headbutts its opponents. We've then got legs, legs, and more legs, which are really nicely designed. They've got a really creepy, creepy, sharp look to them. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense to you, John? It does. It's, it's kind of what I get the sense of from Crix. Everything is designed to be a weapon. Yeah. You know, any kind of motion is going to be killing something. We then have this, which is the head for your Reaper, which again, it has two big tusks, and it does get to use them in combat, I believe. Yep. We then come to the weapons for the Reaper. So it's got this, which is a harpoon gun. Mm -hmm which has some really, really cool effects in game, but we'll get to that in a minute once we have everything together. And we then have this, which I believe is the Hell Driver. So it's uh, essentially a big, you know, scythe type weapon, yeah. which is just gonna tear you a new one, which mm -hmm. is always a good time in a can. All right, <clears throat> Agatha. Oh, is she single piece? No, three piece. Ah, right, I Four see. piece, sorry. Yeah, so the sculpt on this is actually really nice. Mm -hmm. So uh, here's the main body here. She's quite big for a Warcaster, I will say that, really tall. Yep. But that doesn't really make a difference in this game because it's all off base volume. Yeah. So that your miniature can be as big and as brash as you want, but it's down to how big the actual base is to tell you how big the miniature is and whether or not it can be seen. Mm -hmm. So you've got that. You've then got her head. You'll be able to see this a lot better once we get that put together. And then we have these, which are some kind of uh, wings, I think, that go onto her back. Well, like fan sort of blades that go on her back like a crest. Yeah, yeah. So again, we'll see these really well whenever we have it all put together. Mm -hmm. And then the last thing we have, I believe you've only pulled out one complete of these, jobs. I've, I've only pulled out a, a, a few example pieces. I can't actually find any of the heads at the minute. All right, well, if, if you keep looking, I'll start showing this off. So ah. these are your Bane Warriors. Now, these are a really useful unit within the game. They're tough. They're going to be able to move forward and actually take a bit of a beating. Mm -hmm. The good thing is they also have Weapon Master, which means that whenever they're rolling to do damage, they're getting 3d6, you know, mm -hmm. so instead of the standard 2d6. So these things with the power 11, they are really going to hurt. So that's one of the bodies. That's another of the bodies. You're getting a few different poses in here. Uh, you then come across and you get these nice rough made shoulder pads. Mm -hmm. You know, so these are just crying out for some nice dark silvers and brasses. Yeah. You know, maybe a bit of verdigris across them. 
You then get the weapons for them. These guys are running around with big, massive two-handed axes that are ready just to cleave you in two. Mm -hmm. We then get a little sprue of some of the heads on here. Now, these guys are all undead, raised from a, some gravesite in a battleground, and brought back to life. We then have all of these little bits, which are actually sort of little crest pieces which go up and around the shoulders. Mm -hmm. So we're so, sort of running in theme with Agatha's sort of back. Well, crest. it's actually something that they've always sort of had. Yeah. You know, because uh, the beings are, well, they're undead warriors. Simple as that. Uh, if we want to quickly run through the Signar, because there is one thing that they get which we wouldn't have seen before, and that's the, the Storm Guard. Yep. And as I said, the important thing for the Storm Guard is they actually play really well into the Fireflies' abilities, mm -hmm. because they have a, a ranged attack, which is a electrical damage. And as you can see, their actual uh, weapons themselves, well, they're immune to electricity themselves, and it's actually the leader that gets the ranged attack. So there's only one ranged attack in the unit, which is interesting. But having a ranged attack that's got electrical damage, the Firefly is going to be boosting that, which is always a good thing. Yep. So this, okay. So I'm guessing this is not actually part of the miniature. This is a little bit of yep, the... Yeah, that's a bit of flash or something. The, the actual sprue that they're cast to. Yep. But I like the idea of these guys because they've got that really knightly feel to them. Yeah. You know, and the, again, it's just crying out for some, some nice blues, some great shiny shiny gold some silver mixed in there a little bit of leather mm -hmm. job done these are going to be an absolute breeze to paint up uh what do we have then john uh weapons ah yes so there's going to be a couple of different types of weapon in this so you've got this which i believe is your standard grunt's weapon yep and then you have this which is your leader's weapon which is actually going to be firing out that big electrical blast mm -hmm. So it's it's really nicely designed. I like the actual fact that these are coming pre-colored because it means that all the youngsters out there who are just wanting to jump into the game can just get stuck in with it. Yep. They're not hanging about going, oh, but I need to prime this, oh, but I need to paint this. Yeah. You know. So other than that, what else do we get here? Uh, well, we have the jacks and the... Yeah, if we quickly rip those open okay. and just let people know you do get them in the kit if I don't send bits flying everywhere. It's all right, we got that one. Uh, sorry, it was just an arm. It's just not. Don't worry. Don't worry. Just an arm. It's Didn't make him armless. It's still good. Ah. Sorry. Couldn't resist. There ain't no arm in that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. So we've got the the ironclad here. So you've got your main body. Uh, nice, simple, clean sculpt. You'll be fit to put this together in no time. Uh, the one thing I will say is some of the venting positions on these are a little bit strange. Mm. But, you know, that, that comes down to the guys in the factory who are actually, you know, designing up the, the sprues that these are all cast in on. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got the big quick hammer. Great thing about this, it's got a critical knockdown on it, so your enemies are going to be falling on their backs, mm -hmm. making them far easier to hit. You've got the big boiler to go on here. Again, there's some really nice detail on there, right down to the little gauges where you've got the little uh, pointers on them. Yep. You've then got the arms. Again, there's just so much detail on these, you're going to have a great time painting them. So you've got your two legs, your other arm. And then you've got, the, in here, you've got the hip joint and the actual head. So I like the fact that they do this, just keeping those small pieces slightly further away from everything else. Yeah. It just means there's less chance of stuff getting lost. Mm -hmm. I believe so that's... This is the Firefly. Yep. And the other one is a Lancer. Is which a Lancer. is another one with an arc node, which is great. Yeah. Uh, basically, anytime I can put an arc node in and it fits, I'm going to do it just because it's, it's that increase of my area of control. Mm -hmm. You know, and depending on what spells I'm using, it can really mess with my opponent. Yeah. So you've got the, the main body, which is standard light jack frame. If you've seen a charger, you've seen a lancer, this is what it is, right? Mm -hmm. You've then got your smokestacks. Again, those are pretty standard. You've then got this, which is a little electrical lance, which actually has some, some cool little abilities to it. Oh, yep. nice. Uh, it's very, very nice. Lots of detail on there. You've then got the gun, which is another electrical type damage weapon. Mm-hmm. Other than that, you've got a little sprue here with some of the extra components on it. So you've got elbow joints, forearm, and the head. You then have the two legs, and that's all he wrote. Mm -hmm. So uh, pulling these out of the way, we then have the Lancer as well. Yep. The Lancer is basically the same. Basically the same, it. but if I quickly show it under camera, you can just about see you've got a shield and a spear with this one, which yep. is very different. The shield on that is incredibly important because anytime you hit a Warjack with that, it's mm -hmm. taking an instant point of damage, automatic, no rules needed aside from hitting, yeah. to its cortex. So you don't need to roll the damage. Yeah. Other than that, you've got Beth Maddox, who is an ele electric type warcaster with her, uh, her weapon, which is actually a sword which transforms between being a sword and an electric rifle, which I think <laughs> is quite cool. Yeah. I think that's pretty much everything for miniatures wise in the box. Uh, we get a little baggie of dice, yeah, John? Baggie of dice and a baggie of tokens. Okay, now this is one of those things I really like about it. 
because you're getting a bag of tokens, you're not having to go out and hunt them down or have little slips of paper laying all around your table. Yeah. Best way to use these is just get a little dry erase marker, put down whatever your upkeep spells are on them, job done. Yeah. So, uh, I'll tell you what, John, I'm going to send you away and have you build all this. Have fun with that, Justin, you do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, guys, we'll take a break here, we'll be back with all this built in a minute. Hi guys, we're back and we've got some of the models from the two-player starter kit built, mm -hmm. okay? So, uh, what do you think, John? Well, before we kick into this, um, I did go out and check because we have the smaller, the individual quick starter set. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it is Agatha in that box. Okay, So. Okay. That little person, you know, hopefully there's no comment yet, but we know there's always one person that comes in and tries to say first. Yeah. And I have a feeling he's going to say first, and it's Agatha <laughs> in there. <laughs> so, right, yes, on to the build. Yeah. Um, this is where the two-player starter set sort of stumbles for me. Okay. Because it's not an overly, it's not a new hobbyist's friend, okay. this set. It's not particularly geared towards someone that's new to the building models. Okay, well, what, what are the issues, just so we're, we're clear? Right, so the main issues I found when I was building what I've built here is that there is no build guide. Okay. Um, there's plenty of stuff that tells you how to prep models. Mm -hmm. uh, they have a little bit of a leaflet in there that says, you know, when you're prepping the model, do this, wash the parts, and so yeah. on and so yeah. forth. Um, but there's nothing for these kits in particular to say, this body lines up with these arms, and this axe goes on there, and those shoulders are for that. Okay, um, so I'm, I'm assuming, are we talking about the, the Bane Warriors here? We're, we're talking about everybody. Everybody. Uh, in general. Warjacks, are okay. Warjacks are fairly straightforward. Okay. Anyway. You buy, and they're in one bag, which okay. is a good thing. But the likes of the, the units, mm -hmm. they have their torsos in one baggie and their weapons in another baggie. So you're opening them and... So you're dry fitting a lot to get everything to fit right. You're pouring a lot of parts onto your desk and dry fitting every single one till you find a matching set. And okay. that is time consuming. Okay. Um, For the Warcasters, I'm guessing it's easier because they're bagged alone. Yeah, the Warcasters are fine. Mm. Um, I'm not particularly happy with the coloured plastic either. Okay. That's just an aesthetic thing for me. I look at it and go, you look a little toyish, you look a little soapy. Okay. That's why when we built it, I've primed them and... Uh, the details jump out a little more. Yeah, it does them a lot more justice once you've got something down yeah. on them. Well, uh, pass me Agatha first. Let's okay. have a, a look at her under close camera and we'll have a look at Beth as well at the yeah. same time. So, these are our two Warcasters. Mm -hmm. So, it's a really nice pose on this, I have to say. It is. But I can see what you say, the details could be a little sharper. Yeah. Now you have to wonder, because I know this is going to be a new sculpt, this is going to be a new mould. I'm wondering if it's the actual material that's actually maybe not picking up the detail quite so well as some of the older resins. Because we were having a look at some of the convergence stuff beforehand, mm -hmm. details are razor sharp. So yep. it might be just a learning curve with the new material for detail wise. It, it could be, um, I don't know, that maybe they're taking them out of the moulds too soon in the manufacturing side. Possibly, possibly. Things are being allowed to still move around, they're too mm. warm. Yeah, well, I mean, like, uh, we'll have a look at Beth here as well. Now, mm. she looks nice and sharp under the close camera. Yeah. There's maybe one or two details just in and around the legs where you've got that sort of uh, padded cloth effect mm -hmm. where it could be maybe a little sharper. But overall, I'd say that's that's not bad. Mm -hmm. That's not bad at all. Uh, what else do we have here? Right, we have, uh, do you want the jacks? Uh, yeah, let's have a look at the jacks. Okay. I'll grab the ironclad first. Mm -hmm. So, He's an ironclad, you know who he is, you know what he is. Yep. Details are pretty much as good as ever, I would say. You know, because yep. I, I have seen these both in the grey plastic and in the, the new blue material. Yeah. So I think that's okay. Uh, we then have this, which I believe is... Ooh, which of them is this? If I get the card. Not the Death Ripper, because that's a little one. It's not the... Sl actually... Oh, John, you've made a mistake here. What? Uh, you've got the Slayer's head on the Reaper's body. See, if I had a build guide. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a simple enough mistake yeah, to make, a, make because this is such a modular kit. Yeah, I also think that the heads are an aesthetic yeah, thing. I'm not too worried about those. It's the weapons you always want because that's Yeah, because that's the, the main card. silhouette of the miniature. Yeah. Uh, I am seeing one thing here which I'm, I'm not such a fan of. You see the, the actual vent placement? Yes. That would be an issue for me just because... Now, I think this is more a production issue than a design issue. Yeah. Because it's it's the guys in the actual factory then that are having to bring everything off the sprue mm -hmm. and actually then lay it all out and you know pick and pack it. Yeah. You know, so I think there's something there that the guys at Privateer maybe want to have a look at just mm -hmm. to make that a little bit better. I th I I definitely think the the manufacturing side is one of the largest problems, and I wouldn't say even problem, just an issue. I just because something to look at. Because if uh, and this is something that I I know I was a little rough there a minute ago. Yeah. But. Privateer's plastic sprue war jacks oh, yeah, are, fantastic. are beautiful. Yeah. They have instructions with them. Yeah. They're beautiful. Even these war jacks, when they come in their individual boxes, have a build guide on the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
this is just something that this two player set needs. Yeah, that's, that's, that's it. That's fair enough. Uh, well, I mean, like for me, the actual design of the jacks, they're fantastic because they have that, that nice Crix feel to them, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, I mean, like, if I could f have this one thing fixed for the actual placements, because yeah. there's once or twice they're placed in sort of awkward places to actually get to. So in this one, there's a vent right between the two smokestacks. Yeah. For me, the first time I came to that and trying to get a blade between, I was having to be really careful to actually get yeah. the, the actual bit of extra sprue off that. Mm -hmm. So I think that for me is where my issue would lie with this. The material I'm happy enough with, yeah. but again, that's personal preference at that point. Uh, whenever we come to the units, I believe these are the Stormguard Infantry. Mm -hmm. You know, the details look nice and sharp on these. Yep. But again, I'm seeing a couple of places where I can still see, you know, where that uh, that vent has been to actually mold everything. Yep. You know, so I think it's there's maybe a little bit more hobby needed to bring these up to spec mm -hmm. than I would personally like. But overall, I think they have a great style to them, and I think these ones, yeah, they pick up the detail pretty damn well. Yeah, there's there's no doubting that the models are class looking once you've got them built and you've got a layer of primer down. Yeah. Oh, they, if I don't throw them out, <laughs> they they stand up to nearly every other major company and minor company oh, yeah, yeah. out there. Easy. Yeah. We then have our our bands, mm -hmm. our band warriors. So we've got our unit leader, mm -hmm. who's again really nice pose. Once he gets a lick of paint down on him, he's going to look great. Yeah. Uh, were there any issues with these ones? Are these the ones that you were maybe trying to find what was fitting where, or was it with both units? Yeah, a little bit with both units, but particularly the bands here, because mm. um, on the unit leader, now, if you look at the shoulder pads, for example, yeah. they're identical, right? I'm pretty um, sure they're identical, apart from the leaders maybe being a bit longer. Yeah, but I don't even think they're longer. I think it's just that they're plugging onto a different pose of the actual miniature, because yeah. this guy shoulders are down coming forward with him having the arm up, straight up yeah. it's sort of maybe a different connecting point yeah but the, th the thing that confuses me about these kits is that mm. these shoulder pads on the grunts are yeah. completely smooth on the inside and they sit on the shoulder yeah. in the place but on the leader yeah. they're plugged mm. and it's it seems like you could simplify that kit a little bit by just saying don't worry about the plugs just all the shoulder pads fit everybody yeah it, yeah it just seems a little complicated well it, it, it comes down to design at that point because yeah. i mean like uh after these miniatures are all done up in their design work, mm -hmm. they then have to go across and then somebody has to figure out, right, how do I break this down to cast it? Yeah, a 3D model is disassembled and put onto a sprue layout to yeah. see how best forms. Yeah, so I think that's maybe where be. your disconnect is happening for yeah, that. Yeah, probably. Maybe just a little. Yeah. All right, but I mean, like, the actual factions themselves in this box are fantastic to mm -hmm. actually play against each other. I do want to talk a bit of gameplay with these as well, mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, they are gaming miniatures. Of course, you know? yeah. So this isn't a you know display piece model where mm. you're going to put it on a shelf and say, oh, look, isn't it pretty for but the rest if, of its life. But if you're Thomas Menes, you can do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because you're, you're insane Menes, enough you to go in and <laughs> add all that awesome detail. All right, so I, I did chat a little bit about the Death Ripper with its arc node, so yep. we don't need to mention that again. Okay. Uh, the Slayer is pretty much the standard big bashy jack. Mm -hmm. The Reaper, however has that harpoon gun, which mm. has a really nice ability. Now let me bring the miniature in again. Now, yes, I know it was the wrong head, but that's that's life. That's my so fault. <laughs> this is this is the harpoon gun here. Uh -huh. And it is a really nice ability called drag. Right? right. Okay. So what this actually does <clears throat> get my speaking voice on. Get your speaking voice on, sir. Yep. When this model damages an enemy model with an equal or smaller base, immediately after the attack is resolved, the damaged model can be pushed directly toward this model and uh, you, until it contacts a model an, an obstacle or an obstruction. So, so you're basically firing dragging, out and this dragging thing by. people yeah. in. So doing the scorpion, get over here. Yeah. Uh, it's also got sustained attack on the, the hell driver, which mm. is the, the sort of claw arm. Yeah. So once you actually get that two hit, it's just automatically hitting, which I think is a really nice thing. Yeah. It's also got tusks on it, same as the slayer. So it's it's got that nice little extra punch. Mm -hmm. uh, other than that, the Bane Warriors are a great unit for this because of what they do. So yep. these are the guys here. But what they have is, you see on the back here, it's called Dark Shroud. Yep. It's basically whenever people get within a certain range of them, they actually take a, a minus to their armor. So while in this model's melee range, enemy models suffer minus two armor. Mm -hmm. And the melee range is one inch. So there's like a one inch bubble around everybody in the unit, mm -hmm. dropping armor down. So if you can get these guys in first and send in, say, the Reaper and get it hitting, mm -hmm. it's getting an, an extra nice buff to its, its attack, which yep. I think is quite nice. Uh, they also have ghostly, but we won't go into that now. The last one I want to talk about is Agatha's Feet, which mm -hmm. is called Shadowfall. So what this does, it gives everybody in her control area on her side stealth, mm -hmm. but it also gives them a three-inch place. Right. So they can sort of 
shutter and jump to another location on the board. So mm. it gives you a little bit of a, a refactor whenever you're hitting that crunch time. Yeah. The Signar Battle Box, we do know it is a fantastic box. The Firefly is a great little one because of its ability, because it's got uh, ionization. When a model suffer when an, a model suffers an electrical damage roll, well, within five of this model, you can add plus two to it, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, you see our our storm guard here. Yeah. That range attacks an electric attack of a range ten. Mm -hmm. So basically, it's a power six to start, but with that, it goes to a power eight. So right. you can really start to mill through those being uh, warriors. Mm -hmm. That, and I think it may have uh, some other stuff on it as well. Yeah, there's a, a ton of special rules on the back of this particular card. So I think this is a this is a box that's going to give you those extra tactical options that you sometimes want from the the base battle boxes. Yeah. Because you'll play your base battle box games, and then you're you're wanting to make that step up. So this is instantly giving you that step up nice mm -hmm. and easily. So I do love it from a gameplay standpoint, and yep. I think the two factions are going to play really well against each other on the tabletop. Mm -hmm. Just take <sighs> your time on the hobby side of things, and yeah. you will have to invest a, f a few hours to get everything yeah. together yeah. and the way you want it. Yeah, well, you see, it it all depends on you know how you're getting into the hobby. Because if it's let's say you and me had never war gamed before, right? We pick up this set, we open it up, and we say, right, let's get everything put together. Mm -hmm. Now. You're going to look at it and go, okay, what do I what do I need here? So you're going to be going out to get your craft knife, your clippers, and stuff like that. Yep. Hopefully, you'll be in a hobby store where you're already told, okay, you'll need this, this, and this. If you're building it in the hobby store, there'll probably be people around you to actually help you through those early steps. Yep. But if you're doing it on your own, yeah, you're going to want to you know step back for a minute and just think about it. Don't just hammer everything together. Yeah, exactly. You know. But overall, I like the kit. Mm -hmm. I think that, yes, there are some things that could be done better. It's a fantastic idea, and I like the way they've pulled it off. Yeah, I just think if there was a build guide, that as, would, a, as a leaflet, mm. a build guide for every unit in in the box, mm. that would make this a superb starter set. Okay, so that's your one thing. That is the one thing if I could add. And okay. it, it doesn't even have to change the, the kit, they just have to put that in there. Yeah. Or if it's available online. Yeah, yeah. I Maybe mean, just a little leaflet saying, go here to find out how to build your minis. Yeah, something like that. Okay. And that would make this set superb. All right, well, uh, that's my thoughts, that's John's thoughts. Guys, drop your comments below, tell us what you think. Progress comes to a world of magic as science and the arcane combine to make marvels. Meet steampunk inventors and orc mystics at the Volsung Hub on beastsofwar.com. Keep your blaster handy, the West is a dangerous place. Fight to survive as men turn to monsters and the dead rise on the Wild West Exodus Hub at beastsofwar.com.